A couple months before the big day, Chuck was outside working on the car when a van drove into our driveway so quickly that it barely had time to stop. Three men jumped out it wearing ski masks and grabbed Chuck and threw him in the back of the car and then sped off. A few hours later, Chuck came walking home. He had a slight limp and his face was covered in bruises. Oh my God, Chuck, are you okay? Hi there, my name is Jason, so I have a story to tell you, and I hope that you take it as a cautionary one. I know that all families have their black sheep or stories that are usually not spoken to people outside of the family, but I want you to hear this one about my family. Although in this case, the black sheep is actually the good person. Now that isn't to say that my family is really that bad. Not all of them at least, but more than a few of them are just downright awful people. I can recall some of my uncles when I was growing up saying and behaving in some downright obnoxious ways. There was one time in particular that I actually wondered if there was something really wrong with them when I brought home a friend from school. Franklin was black, but I never really noticed. All I ever cared about was that we liked the same cartoons and played the same video games. Hey there, Jason. Looks like some wild animal followed you home. What? What are you talking about? This is my best friend, Franklin. He's not a wild animal. Yeah, the boy is right. They don't usually turn into wild animals until they're teens at least. Why is he your best friend? Couldn't you make friends with a friendly white kid? I don't understand. Why are you being mean to my friend? Franklin is really nice. It's okay, Jason. I really should be heading home. I have homework that I need to work on. That's right. You just run along, boy. Best you don't come around here anymore. I could tell that Franklin was very upset. And although I didn't understand at the time why, I knew that my uncles were responsible. From that point on, I began to distance myself from them. After all, they had hurt my best friend's feelings, and I still haven't to this day forgiven them for it. When I grew up, I began to understand that they had behaved that way because they were just racist jerks. At any rate, after that day, I always made a point of going over to Franklin's house instead of inviting him over to mine. His father, Chuck, always made me feel welcome, and I really did enjoy going over. And honestly, I rather enjoyed spending time with him. My own father had run off before I was one, so I was kind of looking for a fatherly figure, while Franklin had a similar relationship with my mom. His own mother had passed away during childbirth with him. Because we were so close, our parents began hanging out as well. So while Franklin and I played, they went on what I realized later were dates. Without really realizing it, we began to do things like a family, like spend the holidays together and go on vacations. It just felt very natural. And then my mother and Franklin's father sat the two of us down and told us the news that would change our lives forever. Hey boys, Martha and I have something we need to tell you two. We've been talking and we wanted the two of you to be the first to hear that we got engaged and are going to get married. We know this is a bit of a shock, but we love each other very much and we would like to officially make the four of us a family. Does this mean that Jason and I will become real brothers? Um, yes, it does. That's awesome. The news felt wonderful to hear, and knowing that my best friend in the whole world was going to be my brother made me incredibly happy. When my mother told our family that she was marrying Franklin's father, there were some among them that were happy for her, but the majority took after my uncles. They told her that if she went ahead with the wedding, that she would be disowned by the family, and that was only if they didn't kill Franklin's father instead. My mom and Chuck were scared, but they truly did love one another and so they chose to ignore my uncles and make plans for a wedding. A couple months before the big day, Chuck was outside working on the car when a van drove into our driveway so quickly that it barely had time to stop. Three men jumped out it wearing ski masks and grabbed Chuck and threw him in the back of the car and then sped off. A few hours later, Chuck came walking home. He had a slight limp and his face was covered in bruises. Oh my God, Chuck, are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. But those three guys that tried to kidnap me will think twice about doing it again. They drove me out by the bridge, and when they told me to get out of the van, I took my opportunity to grab a tire iron that was lying on the ground, and I beat them with it until they finally gave up and drove away. They did get some punches on me, but my bruises will heal quicker than their broken bones. We of course knew that the three men had been my uncles, but Chuck said that there wasn't enough proof to confirm it was them although all three of them walked with a limp and two of them had either a cast or a sling on their arms. 
It was plainly obvious that it was them, but Chuck and my mother played it cool and said nothing. The day of the wedding came, and we had a big celebration. Some of my extended family came to the reception, but most of the people there were from Chuck's and Franklin's side of the family. We had a blast, though, and partied hard all night. After that, we didn't see much of our side of the family, but I was fine with that. As the years rolled by, I began to understand that they were just cruel and bigoted people, and that just wasn't something that I wanted in my life. Holidays were always a bit awkward. We spent most of them with Chuck and Franklin's side of the family, who were very welcoming and warm. But the few times our side would see us, they would call us names and slurs and try to pick fights with Chuck. Eventually, we stopped going to family events and just kept to ourselves, or went to the other more welcoming side. And so the years passed, and Franklin and I grew up. We stayed really close, and even ended up going to the same university. Being a doctor was very common in my family, and Franklin and I had plans that when we graduated, that we would take after our mother and become dentists, and the three of us would own our own office. Of course, my uncles kept asking if I would join one of their practices since they too were dentists, but even if they were profitable, and I can assure you that they weren't, I would much rather work with my brother and mother. Shortly after graduating and joining her at her practice, our mother became very ill. Several doctors examined her, but the prognosis wasn't very good. She was told that she had cancer and that she had a year to live at most. It was a shock to us, of course, but we made sure that that last year was one filled with happiness. In the end, though, she passed away. It was very hard on the three of us to plan out her funeral, but managed. The day of the funeral. Dragged on, and at the wake, my uncles cornered me while I was alone. Hey there, Jason. We're sorry to hear about your mother. With her gone, though, we wanted to talk to you about something. We need your help. Our practices are struggling, and we need money to breathe life back into them. Do we really need to talk about this right now? And why are you even talking to me about this? Well, with your mother gone, we need you to realize that Chuck only ever married your mom for her money, and that his kind are nothing but gold diggers. You need to open your eyes and realize that family should come first and that we deserve your help. Exactly. We need you to sell your mom's practice and give us the money so that our own practices can thrive again. Just think about it, but don't take too long. I was completely baffled by their actions. I had always known them to be selfish pricks, but I really didn't understand just how horrible they could be. They weren't even remotely upset by the passing of my mother. Angrily, I went and told Franklin what my uncles had said to me, and he told me to speak with my uncles again, but to record the conversation. I knew exactly where he was going with the idea, and I did just that. I went over to my uncles and using my phone to record our conversation, I got them to better explain their plan. Every time they said a hateful slur about Chuck and Franklin, I bit my tongue to stop myself from saying anything. After they had reiterated their bigoted and hateful plan, I told them that I would need a few days to think it over and then went and shared the recording with Franklin. That night, we posted the recording to every social media site we could think of and then just sat back and watched the people on the internet do their thing. Within hours, people were leaving negative reviews for their practices and proclaiming that the owners were racist and had to be boycotted. It was magical. Within two months, all three of them were on the verge of going bankrupt as no one was using their services anymore. In a fit of rage, the three of them came over to Chuck's house while Franklin and I were visiting him. They demanded that we meet them outside as they wanted to fight us so they could teach us a lesson. And so all three of us went outside and told them to get off the property, which they refused to do. Finally, we threatened to call the police and have them charged with trespassing. When they heard that they blew a gasket and they attacked us. It really wasn't much of a fight though, as all three of them were much older than Chuck and in much worse shape than us. We didn't beat to a bloody pulp, but we made damn sure that they would need months to recover. It wasn't the right thing to do, but it felt good. After that, they left us alone completely, and honestly, I was glad for it. We knew that we would be in the clear just in case they went to the police since Chuck had a doorbell camera and it showed that my uncles were the instigators. The recording online went viral, and the three of them were forced to close their practices and declare bankruptcy. With their jobs and source of money gone, all three were divorced by their wives and ended up living together in a small one-bedroom apartment. Even though I never spoke to them ever again, I heard from people that the three were very miserable and were constantly fighting. 
I can only imagine that they blamed us for the predicament that they found themselves in. Meanwhile, Franklin and I took over our mother's practice and are thriving. Without the competition that our uncles posed, we were able to massively grow our client list. So much so that we encouraged our father to retire early so that he can enjoy life without having to worry about work anymore. We now pay him a salary from the business and make sure that he is very well cared for. We know that it's the very least that we can do, and we know that it would make our mother proud as well. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below saying I subscribed, and we will try our best to reply to your comment.